We've got two CVEs under active exploit and a whole bunch more to cover. It's a spooky October patch Tuesday. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative, coming to you with another group of patches here on Patch Tuesday, the latest and greatest from Adobe and Microsoft. And if I sound a little odd, yes, I have a uh, I have a cold that I'm struggling to get over. So hey, if you've got a cold remedy, why don't you leave me a comment below and, and tell me how to get over this thing, because it's, it's been rough. But forget about me, let's talk about Adobe patches first, because we've got nine patches, 52 CVEs, None are under active attack. This is kind of a regular Adobe release. I do want to bring up the Adobe Commerce patch because it is the biggest at 22 CVEs. It's also the only one marked priority two. Normally Adobe patches are marked priority three. Uh, there's nothing under active attack or publicly known, like I said, but with uh, Commerce and all it handles, they definitely feel like upping the, uh, upping the priority. So yeah, pay attention to that. Moving on to Microsoft, we have 117 new CVEs in the usual components. I do want to point out Windows Mobile Broadband is in here too. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, five of these are listed as publicly known and two of these are listed as under active attack. And the first one looks amazingly familiar. It's this MS HTML platform spoofing vulnerability. And we talked about something just like this back in July that we detected in the wild. We haven't detected this, we the ZDI have not detected this specific CVE, but we are seeing this type of activity in the wild uh, used by Void Banshee as well as a few other APT groups. You can read all about our previous analysis. I linked there. I'll try to put a card up here someplace for it as well. And uh, yeah, so there's no word from Microsoft on how widely this being uh, exploited or if it's the same group or somebody new. Uh, but yeah, definitely make sure you get that patched and go from the strangely familiar to just the strange. Uh, there's active attacks in the Microsoft Management Console. That's right, MMC. And you're thinking, how in the world is MMC being attacked? And, and, and I was thinking the same thing. Apparently, there's a lot of social engineering involved. You have to send someone a malicious snap-in and have them loaded in, into an affected MMC. Um, okay, I guess if you could convince someone to do that, and if you're using MMC, you're probably running it as admin, so... That's a quick way to get admin, but if you're like getting snap-ins from uh, some weird sources, you need to rethink things, how you do things. Maybe maybe outsource that management instead, because that, that's bad. Uh, and not to be confused with MMC, because I'll admit it, I, I confuse these at first, is the Microsoft Configuration Manager. My dyslexia heads its ugly rear. What are you gonna do? Uh, now, this one is much more uh, interesting as far as the attack scenario, because it's just, sending remote uh, unauthenticated attackers, sending specially crafted request to CVSS 9.8 bug. Uh, now, in addition, uh, you'll need to get the in console update to be protected. So again, people who say just patch, shut your trap and actually read the blog. Um, this is why we, we don't say just patch. So you have to get the in console update to be fully protected from this. Make sure you do that. It's a CVSS 9.8, it's the most severe bug this month. And finally, the other one I really want to highlight is this RDP server RCE. Uh, and this is uh, not as high as CVSS, but again, it's a remote unauthenticated uh, attacker sending specially recrafted RPC to uh, hit an RDP server. So this is somewhat wormable between RDP servers that are affected, but you should be blocking RPC at your perimeter. So really it's only going to be local attackers who are using this. Hopefully that, that takes care of it, uh, but still technically wormable between RPC, uh, RDP servers using RPC request. That's A-OK. -okay. Right. Now let's move on to the other stuff. Um, and yeah, this is one area I want to point out. Uh, just because Microsoft says it's moderate doesn't mean you need to ignore it because those are the two under active attack. And they knock it down to moderate because of things like Oh, user interaction that knocks it down, or you know, it has to be combined with something else like the MSHTML one, uh, so it knocks it down. Uh, but you have to look at the whole thing, and that's just one thing you look at. Um, a couple other critical ones. The only other critical one that we haven't covered off yet is actually uh, you don't have to take any action on. They're just documenting it, and it just happens to be critical. So again, the uh, table is here for you to peruse at your leisure. 
And we moved down there a bunch of RCE bugs uh, that we that get patched this month. A lot of them are the open and own variety, where it's like an Office document, and the open it, and then it you know get code execution. There's like a dozen bugs in the RS service, but only a few of those could be triggered by a remote attacker. And they're the type of bugs that we don't really see exploitation in, so nothing that's uh, really interesting. Here's one thing that is interesting, and that's a code execution bug in deep speed. Uh, and this is the open source deep learning optimization library that Microsoft uses. So as far as I can tell, it's the first deep speed CVE. So congratulations, deep speed getting uh, a CVE, hooray. Uh, there's no details on this, but very interesting. Uh, open SSH, but they require extensive user interaction, not as exciting. The bug in Hyper-V is somewhat interesting, um, but it's incredibly limited. So it could allow a guest OS to execute code against another guest OS, but not against a, a different system on a different Hyper-V server. Eh, whatever. Um, it's kind of cool. I, I, I like it. Uh, but beyond that, there's nothing really, really interesting here. I do want to mention that mobile broadband driver again, because you can get RCE through this, but it's only if you uh, actually install a malicious USB drive. So again, if you find a USB drive in your parking lot, run it over. Don't pick it up. Those things are cheap. You can afford one. It's okay. I give you permission. You treat you. That, that's good. But no, just run that thing over because no good can come from plugging that in. Uh, we'll get to some other of these mobile broadband uh, driver bugs uh, when we get down to the DOS bugs. Uh, looking at the EOP bugs, the privilege escalation ones, almost all lead to system level code execution or admin privileges. Uh, the net login one is... Fascinating. Uh, I don't think it'll ever be exploited in the wild, but it's so interesting. So it allows, so you have to be on the LAN adjacent. If you can guess the name of the new domain controller that someone is standing up, you could impersonate it and then become the domain controller. What a weird corner case, but kudos to the person who found that. And every time you see a jump cut, that means I had a coughing fit. And an angel gets his wings. So. Uh, Azure Command Line, that's interesting, but uh, uh, the only other one here is the bug in Outlook for Android. Uh, if you open a meeting invite or calendar invite, you could escalate privileges on that. Obviously, you got to get that from the uh, Android Play Store, so do that. Uh, that's another good excuse for emails, not meetings. There you go. There's quite a few security feature bypass bugs this month and BitLocker stands out because the BitLocker SSB means you're evading BitLocker. Also, if you're running Windows Server 2012 R2 only, you need to install this other KB to be fully protected. So again, Windows Server 2012 R2, make sure you get that KB. Uh, there's three different bypasses for Windows Resume ext Extensible, that's easy for you to say, Windows Resume Extensible Firmware Interface, and they all allow local attackers to bypass Secure Boot. Uh, the Scripting Service bypasses Anti-Malware Scanning and Code Integrity Guard. That's right, it allows something to pass Code Integrity checks that couldn't otherwise. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Six Information Disclosure Bugs, all but one is just random memory leaks. The one is Cryptographic Component, uh, and this could lead to like the OAEP. I said that slowly, so I make sure I get through it. OAEP decrypt. Um, you could potentially do a cross VM attack with this. Doesn't sound really realistic, but uh, pretty cool. Um, and then the denial of service bugs. And again, a lot of these are in the mobile broadband driver, but you have to be within proximity of the target system and send to send and receive radio transmissions. So it's wild. It's an over the air exploit that just results in a DOS. Well, the remote code bugs, uh, remote code execution bugs, or the code execution bugs, I should say, require physical uh, presence that you're plugging in a USB drive. So very interesting month for uh, the mobile broadband driver. Uh, really interesting to see. I hope to see some more about that soon. And again, Microsoft, please give us just a little bit more information about these denial of service bugs. Uh, they, they just, you know, what, what, what do we need to do? Do we need to reboot? Does it reboot automatically? Does it recover? Come on, just, just give us a little more. Jump cut. Uh, and finally, we've got a single tampering bug in remote desktop services. Uh, there's no real detail here other than Microsoft. It does state that it requires a machine in the middle. So again, rather, rather unlikely. 
No new advisories. However, the servicing stack has been updated. And that takes us through October uh, with all of my coughs and ju jump cuts and everything else. If you're still here, I appreciate it. And hey, if you're here and uh, I want to bring your attention to Pwn to Own Ireland, which is happening in just a couple of weeks. And we're going to go over there. We're going to see some really, really great research. Uh, I see about 30 entries at least already. So it could be a really great show. Definitely stay tuned to the channel and to our socials to uh, get all the results on that. Our next Patch Tuesday will be on November 12th. And assuming I survive my trip to Ireland, which is, it's going to be tough. It's a lot of work. Uh, we'll be back with all of the latest, greatest uh, patches from Adobe and Microsoft and whomever else may really want a patch. So with that, I say uh, good night and good luck and may all your reboots be smooth and clean. <laughs>